I'm Fiona McAllister. Welcome to Saturday Style Snippets, helping you look and feel better one little bit at a time using fashion psychology and application. <laughs> Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Today's video is about the application and psychology of classic makeup. The psychology of classic makeup is basically just a little bit more polished than your natural makeup and not as um, involved as your dramatic makeup. So the first video that I did in this little mini series was natural makeup, which is your minimalist. And the classic makeup is right in the middle. And then dramatic makeup, which I'll do next, is where you want to, well, have extra drama, where you want to um, really intensify one or several features. Classic makeup is basically what you would wear if you work in an office. It just gives that little bit more polish than the natural look and it also has a little bit more um, communicating a little bit more professionalism than the natural look as well. Classic makeup is also good for covering up um, any blemishes or scars if you are um, a little bit self-conscious about that and you don't want the world to see your bare face. Alright, in my last video I talked about how to do a very simple trick with the lotion and the powder foundation, so you can check that out if you want to know that trick. For this video, I'm going to use a um, like a CC cream or a BB cream, or you can also just use a foundation that matches your skin tone, uh, like a liquid foundation that matches your skin tone, because liquid foundations or BB creams give a little bit more coverage than just your uh, powders and lotion, and like in the trick I showed you in the last video, and so this is for. If you like, I purposely I'm going to use this. I've got a few uh, pimples that are healing, so I've got a, a few uh, scabs that I want to cover up. You can probably see them. And so I'm going to use um, just a liquid foundation for that. Now, you can use a sponge or a brush for this. It doesn't really matter. It's just your personal, just your personal preference. But the trick with the foundation is you want it to be as close to you, the overall color of your skin tone as possible. And then you want to apply it evenly around all of your features, of course. <laughs> and it helps if you can just get a little bit more, especially if you got under eye bags like I do. <laughs> Sometimes I don't care, like I said in the natural vi makeup video, in times I don't care then I don't worry about it, but if I'm purposefully trying to look a little bit more professional or polished then yeah, I want to cover up my under eye bags. I just want it to be as evenly applied as possible. My nose is a bit redder than the rest of my face so if I'm trying to look a little bit more polished or professional I'd like to use this as well. Alright, after you've gotten your base layer of your BB cream or your uh, liquid foundation, then you're going to take a powder foundation that um, either is translucent or that more or less matches the uh, BB cream, CC cream or the uh, liquid foundation that you use. And then you just lightly go over top of the um, liquid foundation. As you can see it um, just basically evens out my face, gets rid of, um, or covers up, it doesn't get rid of it obviously, <laughs> it covers up any um, unevenness in my skin tone. I have a few light freckles that covers those up too. Not that there's anything wrong with freckles, and there's many beautiful women who have freckles. With classic makeup, generally speaking, you want to have two tones for your eyeshadow. One that is similar to your natural skin tone, and one that is a little bit darker. I'm going to use this well-loved palette um, of nude colors for a classic makeup look, and I'm going to start with this middle one here that is basically the same uh, tone as my 
my skin. And so I just generally use my fingers for uh, eye makeup because it's easier for me. But a lot of people like to use brushes. And I just put that over um, the whole part of my lid. It just makes the eyelid look the same tone. So this is your um, natural, not sorry, not natural, your classic look that has nude tones in it. Now you can use many different kinds of nude tones, it could be, but make them match your skin tone. So if you're cool or warm toned, um, I'll do a video on that in the future. But if you're cool and war or warm toned, you want your makeup to, generally speaking, be in the same half of the color wheel. There are exceptions if you want to do costume makeup or be dramatic or more dramatic or things like this or you can match it to your outfit sometimes and I'll do videos on that videos on that in the future but generally speaking you want your makeup to be either in the warm or the cool which is your skin tone base okay now I'm going to do a little triangle in the crease here now the type of way you're gonna highlight your eye would actually change based on your eye shape but for most people just doing a little kind of triangle, you can see how it, I went up in the crease and then down along the lash line. If you do that and then blend it, for most people, that will work well. <laughs> but don't get on your cheek. <laughs> or if you do, wipe it off. I'm not doing a very good job of this, so I'm trying to squint into a tiny little camera. Now we're just going to do some blush and I just have this basic palette. I'm a cool tone, so this is in my cool palette colors. And the easiest, again, every way of applying makeup will change a little bit depending on what shape your face is and what shape your features are. But generally speaking, for blush, you want to kind of go from the top of the ear along the cheekbone or the line of the cheekbone to the space between the corner of your mouth and the tip of your nose. And it kind of goes under the cheekbone a little bit. But again, it depends on the look you're going for and what your face shape is. I have really prominent cheekbones, so I generally don't want to um, to put the blush right on top of them because it just makes them stand out even more. <laughs> and I usually have to wipe off some of the first application of blush because it is heavy. And I totally messed up that side. Well, that's okay. You can always... <laughs> that's the beautiful thing about makeup. You can always wipe it off and try again. <laughs> In order to achieve the more classic look with your uh, mascara, you're going to use a couple of layers rather than just one layer, generally speaking. With the natural makeup, you're going to just quick and easy, done in 30 seconds. With a classical look, you want to um, put on maybe two two layers of mascara or use a, um, a thicker formula. Different mascaras have different thicknesses to them. And this one I'm using is a little bit thicker than the one I used in the natural uh, video. For classic lipstick, you want to stick with uh, tones that are similar to your natural coloring or perhaps a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. But if you want to be having a professional look or a, lightly, a slightly more polished look, then you're not going to go for really dramatic lips or darker colors or, or even super light colors because that also creates a dramatic effect. These two lipstick shades, as you can see, are um, very close to my natural coloring. This one is pretty bang on, and this one's just a little bit darker. But they give you that polished look without being overly dramatic. I generally don't wear a lot of lipstick because I don't like how it rubs off and everything. <laughs> but there are a lot better formulas now. Um, I can't quite think of the exact name of them right now, but there is kinds that um, you put it on and it, and it basically dries to your lips and then it won't smudge, it won't rub off. So if you're going out to dinner or um, even just for a day at the office, that might be an option as well. One thing I neglected to mention earlier is that before you put on your foundation, I don't really care 
if people see that I've got a few zits or scars, um, but I know that many ladies do care. So before you put on your foundation, you would use um, cover up and you would just You would just put that right on top of the zits or um, scabs and it yeah, makes them go away. But you see how it's lighter and you can see where <laughs> this is why you should do things in the correct order. You should put your foundation on top. So you do your cover up first, then your foundation, and then you can apply your lips apply your lips, oh, they're here, apply your lipstick or your eyeshadows or your blush, it really in any order, it doesn't matter. Well there you have it, the psychology and application of classic makeup. Please like my video, subscribe to my channel, and if you are like the rest of the world, <laughs> who's living in a COVID this, COVID that, on and off lockdowns, please check out my mini course Vanquishing the COVID Style Slump. I've got a link to the video there and a link to my course in the description. You'll learn ways to use fashion psychology to help in little everyday ways to boost your self-esteem and vanquish the style slump. Check you next time.